Hello everyone. So today we'll be talking about uh, the volatility index. Like, uh, why do you need to have patience when trading this pair? So this pair is one of the most like dangerous and career crippling pairs there is. And then I feel like there's a hype behind it that actually um, induces most of the retail traders to go into trading it. So listen, if you're not yet good in terms of entry, stay away from this pair because it will hurt you and it will damage your account. So for those that have enough money to play around with uh, volatility index, so um, I'll be discussing why you need to be patient when trading this pair, right? So if you can look at this pair, you can look at it from a daily time frame. So it actually start uh, analyzing from a daily time frame. So this can be found on uh, uh, binary.com. I'm not promoting any uh, brokers that trade anything. So I'm just stating that uh, because everyone keeps on asking me, where do you get uh, your charts? How? Where do you analyze your volatility index and everything? So again, one thing that I'll say, tell you is that like this pair will cripple you very hard. So you have to be able to determine your entry. So for me, whenever I determine my entry, when it comes to this pair, I start analyzing it from a daily time frame because I need to understand what's actually occurring with that pair, right? So from a daily time frame, so one thing you can actually see is that the price has been moving upwards. That means this is a bulls market. Right. So in this bulls market, the bears came into the market. Right. So but the, the reason for bears coming into the market, it was due to profit taking because we have um, institutional players, major uh, uh, players, key players coming into the market, pushing the price further to the upside. Right. And then again, you need to understand why is there such thing as volatility index and what moves volatility index? You can't just come into it and then just be like, oh, I saw someone making money on this. Let me do this. No, you need to be um, thinking about what's best for your career as well. So, and then if you're still a beginner, I would suggest that stay away from this pair. You need to trade pairs um, or stay, stay away from indices or commodities um, and, 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 and metals and everything. Just focus on currencies, especially currencies that are very volatile because they will, they will teach you how to be patient in terms of your entries, they will teach they, you, you will develop your, your personality as a trader, what type of a trader you are. So some people, they don't understand whether they are swing traders, right? They are investors or they are short time traders like scalpers and everything. You don't know the type of person you are in the market. I myself, I am a swing trader, so I know that I need to be patient. So patience, it's a virtue when it comes to trading and it can be mastered over time if you let yourself be in that position of learning and growing. So again, so now looking at this, um, this is something that's easy to analyze, easy to trade, but difficult to actually maintain a proper risk with it because you need to have money when trading this. So as you can see, price has been moving upwards, resulting in the formation of higher highs and higher lows, right? So this is something, it, it, it just shows you that uh, price has been moving to the upside, okay? Just wanna change something, right? So you see higher highs, higher lows, right? So this definitely call confirms the Dow theory, right? This confirms the Dow theory. This confirms the Dow theory. Right. So you see price has been pushing to the upside, resulting in the formation of higher highs and higher lows. That has been occurring. Right. So the market is still considered to be in an uptrend up until a recently formed low has been broken. Right. So a higher low. If the higher low, the recently formed higher low has been broken, then we can start saying, OK, now the trend is actually reversing in direction. Right. So again, so impulse correction impulse right so right now we're currently here at this particular area so what do you do do you take positions based on the fact that you see price now it, it has approached a significant area or are you going to pull out a trend line and say okay the market is here this is the trend line upon the retest of the trend line i'm going to enter what 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 makes you enter into a trade so i feel like most of the retail traders don't actually understand why they need to enter into that trade. They just see a trend line. They just see a support and a resistance. And they're like, ah, I'm in. But you need to understand certain things. You need to understand how the market moves, right? That's the thing that you have to understand. So now we're still considering a long, going long on this position, right? So for me, like, 
I will start considering longs, right? So I do understand that the dough theory still applies, right? So if the dough theory still applies, I'm looking at this area here. This is my area of interest. Previously, this was my area of interest. Now, this is my area of interest. This entire area here. This is my area of interest, right? This is my area of interest. So this is my demand zone. So if this demand zone came back, the market came back, retested the demand zone. So would you say that it's advisable for me to start considering long positions? Because if I am considering long positions, that means my stop loss has to be below my demand zone. That's the rules that I am subjected to, right? I have to take that into consideration. But yet again, this is volatility index. It's so big. You cannot have this kind of a stop loss. Your account will get blown, especially if you're trading uh, like a small account, right? So what I will, I will in turn do is that like, I will monitor price upon entry into my daily demand zone. So upon price entering, entering my demand zone, I will monitor it and then see how it reacts. Then I'll be monitoring it from a four hour uh, perspective. So when I get to a four hour time frame, right? So when you get to a four hour time frame, I actually realized that our price came back to retest the level in which the market broke out of. This is the level where the market, which the market broke out of. So now question comes to mind, is this a trend reversal, right? Is this entire area, this is this, am, am, I, am I seeing a trend reversal? It, it will the price continue pushing a bit further to the upside? So whenever you see this kind of movement here, so like I'll be thinking that, okay, now I should start considering going long because of what I have seen initially, right? So again, I will wait to see how price reacts upon entry into this area, right? This is my key interest. I cannot take positions based on the fact that this was a week and that start considering going long. No, 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 can't do that. Because what are my, my basis of going long? First of all, the first thing that I, I see is this. Look at the speed in which price approached into this level. So right now price, it's actually, it's, a, it's merely reacting to this, the retest of the zone, the first entry into that uh, demand zone. And also which this, this area confluences with the retest of the level in which the market broke out of. And then if you pull out a FIB, Fibonacci, you'll actually see that this level confluences with the 61.8 FIB level. But yet I have no guarantee that price will reverse. So definitely I'm looking at how price reacts upon entry into this level so this is where i'll be looking to take long positions i need to see evidence like you see here this was a supply zone in fact this was a supply zone here so you see how price reacted within the supply zone it starts set forming a series of lower highs so when i start seeing lower highs that's when i start thinking okay now this might be a trend reversal because there is that transition that's occurring in the market so right now i'll definitely be looking at this area this is my area of interest this area here it's my area of interest so i can see price continuing a bit further to the downside probably around in this area this is the area that our it, it's, it's of interest for me this is an area of interest so I'll be looking at how price reacts into in this area because I need to see the momentum dying out. So if you can go on one hour time frame, this is actually a um, supply zone, right? This is actually a supply zone. So I'll be looking to take short position, probably take short positions in this area of supply zone. So uh, one, let me just, uh, so I will be looking to take short positions within this area. So if I'm taking short positions in this area, my short positions will definitely be something uh, that's short term it's not long term it will definitely be long term so take short positions stop loss above the supply zone because this is my supply zone so the market actually retested my supply zone so if i'm taking short position it's just a push to the downside right because i understand that the market also retested the level in which it broke out of so those are the things that you take into consideration when you take when you're taking short positions or when you're taking long positions so right now i'm just saying like you know be aware of the this entire space that's here the supply 
the, 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 the demand zone, the daily demand zone. Just be aware of it before making any impulsive uh, t- actions or to trade or something, right? So um, if you like the content that I share, you know what to do.